Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of AI Dev Tools today. I'm your host, Simon, and we are back once again. In this episode, we are going to learn about preventing AI model drift, confusing retraining strategies for production. And for this episode, we have Amit Arora, who is a software engineering manager. Hi, Amit, and welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. Um... And thanks for watching and joining this one. Um, as Simon said, I'm Ahmed Rora, Software Engineering Manager. So I'll be talking about the topic that's increasingly important as the AI system move from the research labs to real world deployment. Uh, how to prevent model drift in image classifications using continuous retraining strategies. Uh, the presentation is based on my recently published article in the Journal of Computer Science and Technology Studies. I'll try to share real world evidence, uh, practical architectures, and recommendations to keep model performance and trustworthy in production environment. We're going to talk about how do we prevent model drift in image classification using continuous retraining strategies. Uh, I'll move to the actual content. Uh, first, talking about recap of how far we have come as far as the accuracy of image classification is concerned. I think in 2011, the top tier accuracy on standard benchmark was around 50%. Uh, and then LXNet brought it to 63% in 2012. And by 2023, architecture like EfficientNet V2 uh, pushed it over 90%. Uh, despite these advances, production model deployed in real environment often see performance decay due to evolving inputs and context. And that's where the uh, drift becomes critical. Moving on to the next uh, slide, the I, I think without like if you don't do the proactive maintenance, model accuracy erodes by one point five to three percent every month, and can collapse by fifteen percent within a quarter. Uh, enterprises are now allocating around thirty percent, thirty five percent of their ML budgets just to model maintenance. So the takeaway here is very clear. Um, so deploying a high accuracy model isn't the finish. It, basically, it's it's the starting point. That's where you start when you once you have deployed your uh, high accuracy models. Um, so this chart, this is a very interesting chart. Uh, it shows how the static models degrade over time. Like you can see the false positive increased by over 7% per month and false negatives are up by like almost similar, like 6.8 percentage every month. So, I mean, and these just are in the numbers that models are degrading, right? So these represents your lost revenue because of the model getting degraded. It's a manual overhead. You have to actually, the things which are not able to catch by the model, you have the manual overhead there. And of course, the poor user experience, depending on where the model is deployed. So longer we delay the retraining, the, the problem will keep compounding. You can imagine the first month with the problem you're having. In a couple of months, the problem is just keep compounding and problem is becoming intense and intense. So talking about the real world consequences, like, I mean, we talked about like theoretical, the percentage numbers and all this stuff, but what are the real world consequences? I'm bringing a few examples in different industries, which can help you relate the real world consequences of uh, the model drift, right? So if you, if you just pick up manufact manufacturing industry, uh, image classification can lose up to 25, 27% accuracy within six months. Like if you translate that to, that will translate to roughly $3.2 million annual waste and potential, like you can have a bunch of different product recalls. In healthcare, which is a critical industry, even if the model starts with 94% sensitivity, right? So that's pretty high sensitivity. It can drop to 78%. Uh, and like effectively missing critical diagnosis, right? So which is not something acceptable. Uh, financially, like you can think of like just thinking of the financial impact of it, like every 1% degradation leads to the cascade, right? So 1% degradation can have more, like it results in more false positives, uh, lost sales, 
and you can imagine the rising the operational cost right so just one percent and imagine like you're losing 25 percent you're losing uh bunch of 30 percent accuracy in these models like one percent can have such a huge financial impact so now since we have talked about what's a financial implication what's a like we have talked about some of the theoretical numbers on the model uh, drifts that happens that talks about what are the benefits of if you continue con you, if you have continuous retraining of your models what will what will be the benefit of it i think one is the lifespan you can actually increase the model lifespan by 42% uh and then the other one is compute savings you can actually have 60%, 62% saving uh, if you basically do regular retraining versus if you do the full retraining of your model. The third one is data efficiency. Like you will have, uh, we just need like 53% of the training volume versus like the full retraining sample if you have to do it. The other one, which is, I think the, the benefit of it is like 43% fewer false positives. Like, I mean, that is a huge percentage in false positive, right? Uh, it directly improves the trust in the AI system. The so, so, I mean, effectively solution is not just technical. So it's economical and strategic for uh, basically the, the, the retraining requires have that strategic need that, that we, we should be focused on. Um, now we have talked about basically the benefits now what is my like wh what is the the high level blueprint i'm recommending so high level blueprint is we i think first is continuously mon monitor model performance like that's the first thing like if we don't measure it we won't know it right so first step is like are you measuring the performance of the model so a lot of time happens like the model is deployed we started with 95 percent accuracy but after that we have no idea what the accuracy of the model is then use smart sampling right to collect new and informative data for continuous retraining and i think the third step is uh, use incremental training techniques to update the model and very important that we have to preserve the knowledge the existing knowledge of that model and i, I think the final step is through validation like before deployment so that's very important that once you retrain the model uh, make sure that the model is still behaving the way it should be behaving. Uh, so, so this keeps the model current without actually fully retraining the model. So this is this is the high level four steps you need need to follow. Uh, now I'm talking about like like some of the more details in each of those steps. One is like how do I know when to retrain the model? So like we can, I, I think we can rely on the fixed calendar, like every time, like every month we try to retrain, but the, the I think the, my proposal is focus more on, like that's why we are monitoring the model performance. So focus more on uh, monitoring some of the signals from your model. Like you can actually see if the model have certain drops in confidence scores. Uh, you're, you're noticing the shifts in prediction distributions. Uh, you are noticing drift, uh, like you can actually use the couple of techniques like KL divergence or versus staying distance to see if there's a, there's a drift detected in your model. Uh, the other one is canary test failures. You can actually look into those ones, right? So these adaptive triggers ensures that retraining happens before pro uh, performance collapse, not after. Right. And then it's also why it's like it gives you a real signal when to when to retrain your model versus you are guessing it, it takes the guesswork out of the when to retrain your model. Now going to the next portion. Like the other one is we talked about like the we need data for retraining. Like what are the efficient data sampling techniques that we can use to retrain our models? So I, I think the main thing we talked about, we want to minimize the amount of data we need, right? So we can actually focus on these four techniques. One is uh, uncertainty sampling. So we target the input that model struggles with, right? The other one is diversity sampling. So instead of having a lot of repetitions, we avoid repetitions and we try to cover the entire feature space. Uh, the other one is adversarial sampling. 
So add the edge cases to strengthen the robust robustness of the models. And I think last but not least is active learning. Uh, basically, selectively involves human annotators. Um, I mean, so all these techniques can help us avoid, reduce the labeling cost and uh, retraining cycle significantly, right? So, I mean, we, that's a that's a goal of the retraining, and that's one of the advantage of the retraining uh, on a regular basis. So, one major risk. So we talked about like uh, different uh, facets of uh, retraining, how to focus on those one triggers and basically efficient sampling. One major risk with continuous learning is catastrophic forgetting. So, so we're, what I mean by that is where the model forgets what it used to know. To prevent this, I think, uh, like I'm suggesting a couple of things to, uh, to make sure that we prevent this one. This one is very important that models learn new things versus forgetting the, the which which is already new. So one is elast elastic weight consolidations. Uh, this will help to preserve important weights. Uh, the other one is knowledge distillations. Uh, so we want to make sure that we transfer the wisdom from old to new models. And the third one is replay buffers for historical data, right? So we actually use replay buffers for historical data and gradient regularization to avoid harmful updates. So the, the whole goal of this exercise is uh, helping the model learn something new without forgetting which, which is already mastered, which is very critical, right? So we want to basically just focus on the retraining of new things and making sure that previous knowledge is preserved. OK, so a couple of key takeaways uh, I think to sum it up, here are four, uh, four uh, key take takeaways, right? First is like use drift detection methods using KL divergence and variance metrics and other methods to see if there is model is drifting, right? So it goes back to measuring, right? So measuring is a major focus. Uh, be proactive in figuring out if any drift is happening for your model or not. Um, and then within your uh, ML lifecycle, build adaptive retraining workflows with sampling and incremental updates, right? So you want to make sure that you're sampling, you're, you build the efficient sampling techniques so that the sampling volume is low and you do incremental updates. So you build and like the, you're able to quickly update your model. And then the third one is you validate to make sure that the new model is learning new things with the old knowledge preserved, right? So you want to make sure you want to be super critical that you're not losing the old knowledge of your models and you're learning the new things in the model. So uh, validation is super important and it has these dual purposes, right? So one is your model can, you can validate your model, learn new things. The other one is you didn't lose your old knowledge of the model. Uh, I think the the fourth thing which is very important is which helps you give the sense of how critical retraining, regular retraining of the model is that you track the total cost of the ownership. Uh, you have to like once you employ retraining, you will see that you are uh, like how much your return, you want to calculate your return in how much fewer errors you are seeing, right? Or false positive you're seeing with your regular retraining. Uh, how what is the lifespan of the model? Is it increasing or not? Uh, how much compute is actually, uh, how efficient the compute is becoming? Is it going down? Uh, is it increasing, right? So like, I mean, you will see the, the cost coming down, your compute cost coming down as you retrain on a regular basis. So I think tracking that is very important. And especially with the existing system you have or existing life cycle, ML life cycles you have, right? So start tracking it right away before you employ the uh, retraining strategies. Um, the last thank you for time today. Uh, I hope this session offered you practical insights into building resilient and sustainable AI system for the real use cases. I mean, this project was really close to me and I'm excited to see more organizations 
and uh, individuals and institutes employ uh, embrace this continuous learning as part of their uh, production AI strategy. Thank you.